Now, dearly beloved, we are gathered together here to go through this thing called interview, isn't it? <laughs> you seem to like interviews, don't you? Well, I, I talk mostly with my music. I That's good. But you have the most incredible band now, isn't it? This is the best you ever had. Uh, some say that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What do you say to that? I do know this is the best bass player I ever had. <laughs> By far. Larry's, Larry's as important as anybody, anywhere, anytime. Now he's special. He's a special man, yes. And he must now, be now I'm blushing. Yeah. <laughs> he must be very special to you as well. How is it working with the artist? Because you come from Sly and the Family Stone? Yes. So um, to have a background with Sly and the Family Stone, a, a great band, I felt, and to be blessed enough to be in another great band, it's just a wonderful blessing. I'm very happy to be a part of the new power generation. But it must be different. Uh, it's, yeah, different, different. Um, Sly and the Family Stone, um, the music that we made then was opening the doors for a lot of bands that would have come later. So it was, it was new, we were kind of pioneering the way. Yeah. Um, so it was a very new experience, especially doing things like Woodstock, um, with a half a million people there, and the Isle of Wight, and things like that. Yeah. But I also have the impression now that Slave is not anymore on your cheek here, that you feel fresh, new, more funky, yes, more inspired? Yes, sir, very How much. come? Well, once you uh, free yourself from all contractual binds, you. Uh, make music differently in the studio. You're not thinking about working for someone, you're thinking about just uh, creating for God. Yeah, that's important. That's very important. Yeah. And it's 1999 now. That means something special to you, doesn't it? Mm. The party is almost over. Well, for all we know, it could have been 1999 and 1982 for me. <laughs> <laughs> But since your first European concert was in Amsterdam in 81 in Paradiso, remember that night? No. No, it was here. <laughs> since that moment, I have the impression that you have a very uh, long-term and affectionate relationship with European audiences. Are they different from the American ones? Can one say that? Especially in Holland, she said. Well, I tend to have um, a great affection for people who respond to music like I respond to it, with a, the deepest of love and appreciation. So, um, all over the world, you'll find different groups of people who, you know, really get into the song and dance like we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Holland's. Uh, yeah, come a little, on. Just a little <laughs> We're all ears. Well, what, um, what I'm, what I'm, guess I'm trying to say is that, you know, back in 1982, when I was speculating about the year 1999, is I was learning about how time is just a trick. So I try not to spend too much time reminiscing, and um, I'm looking forward more than anything to play with him here in Holland. I mean, yeah. that's going to be the concert. Of But apart from Mr. Graham, you work with, uh, let's say, uh, some top female Dutch artists like Candy Dolfer and uh, the Clayman yeah. sisters, Lois Lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lois Lane likes to talk to you for a second. Knowing that you were here, they have a message for you. Here they come. Hello. Good to see you. Hello. And welcome to Holland. Yes. For us, it's been such a long time uh, since we've seen you. and. Uh, It's been 10 years almost. 10 years almost. <laughs> Nothing has changed though, because me and Mo are still wearing the same clothes, and especially the same boots you liked so much then. She's still wearing I'm the still same wearing them. Yeah. And um, so we hope you're just doing fine. And we just yeah, we heard you had a new album out. Yeah. And uh, we heard a couple of tracks, and it sounds fabulous. And uh, we hope it's going to be a big success. So we hope you are having a good time in Holland. And, and good luck yeah. with your new album. And lots of love. Bye. You once said, the more stuff I write, and you write a lot of stuff, uh, the closer I come to my own destination. What's your definition of your own destination? Uh, I would say the complete oneness with the Spirit of God and uh, knowledge of the truth. Uh, Larry and I have been uh, 
he's been so kind as to help me with a lot of things that I didn't quite have a firm grip on. Uh, there's a lot of temptation out in the world, and it uh, can confuse you and get you wrapped up in something that keeps you from the truth. But uh, with a loving brother like that by your side, usually uh, you do all right. Yeah. So you are a loving brother, aren't you, Mr. Graham? I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> you always succeed in doing that, or? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I feel so. Uh, we have a very close relationship. We spend a lot of time uh, digging deep into uh, the truth and deep into gaining more knowledge and drawing closer to our Creator and uh, that's very, very important. And then as a result, then you become closer to people around you that you love and that love you. Yeah. So working with the artist is more than just making music. Oh yeah, it, it's, 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 we're connected heart to heart. And then out of the heart comes the music, that's the, that's the gift. But uh, if we weren't connected heart to heart, then it would just be playing music with another musician, you know. And he's, he's done that, I've done that, you know. Now is a special time in our life, we get a chance to play with people that we really, really, really care about deep inside. Yeah. Can you always follow him in, in his very, uh, let's say, specific ideas? Well, he allows me freedom of thought, freedom of expression, you know. <laughs> so, Why are you laughing? Well, I'm actually smiling because it makes me happy, <laughs> the thought. <you> know? <laughs> But for example, when the artist says, I celebrate the day I die, that's an idea you can follow completely? Well, each day is a special uh, gift uh, from God, it's a, uh, he being the source of life. And uh, yesterday is kind of like in the past. <laughs> yesterday did die, <laughs> but we're looking forward to tomorrow, as he said a minute ago. Uh, we're always looking forward and not trying to look back. Uh, we can learn from things that we've done in the past, especially if we made some mistakes, yeah. uh, and especially um, gain wisdom by applying the knowledge that we've gained in the past, and that'll help us to have a more successful future. That's so what yeah, it's we're all about, huh? yeah. So we're always looking forward, uh, not only with our spiritual life, but our family life, and also with our music. We're always looking straight ahead. Yeah. Once, and once a person gets a firm grip of life and death, then they fully understand both. For example. You, you had how many birthdays? Me? What do you think? Well, I know that you had one birthday. Yeah. You when were born yeah. on a certain day. Absolutely. You had no more birthdays after that. So I don't celebrate birthdays, so that stops me from counting days, which stops me from counting time, which allows me to still look the same as I did ten years ago, <laughs> just like that lady said. Yeah, because I recently saw your eyes on the Muppet Show. You looked so happy there. Was it a party? Yeah. <laughs> well, these days I'm happy every day. Fine. Um, do you still have the same firm belief in reincarnation? <laughs> Since you don't count days and don't count birthdays? Do you still have the firm belief in not wearing ties? Yeah. I saw you coming in, because normally I'm wearing a tie. Really? Yeah. All right. But you look so great that I thought, well, this is the most modern thing I'm having. You, you, you look sharp. You yeah, look thank sharp. you. I have to count my birthdays. You don't have to. Is it the best album you ever did? That's the best one this week. I, re I record a lot. No, would you have an idea about that? Because, for example, you're working with uh, Cheryl Crow, one of the funkiest people in the business, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Mr. Graham, is he also one of the funkiest people in the business? Mr. Graham? Yeah. Uh, no. Huh? What, what y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> always go to the people. I always defer to the people. I don't, okay. you know, we don't listen to critics, we listen to them. Great. Fi <laughs> Final question. You once made a very intriguing remark saying that sex is the highest form of spirituality on earth. Could you elaborate on that? I could. And would you? No. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks for being here.